Okay, this question tells us that we need to design a window that's 4 feet by 4 feet and separates a room that's maintained at 25 degrees Celsius from the outside that's at 40 degrees Celsius. We're told that it's not to allow more than 5 million calories of heat to enter the room each day. Right? Assume that the glass you use only has a thermal conductivity of 0.96 watts per meter Kelvin. So as we go about starting to answer this question, we're going to have to make some assumptions. First off, um, we're going to assume that this is steady state heat flow, which means that it's not changing with respect to time. What that's really saying is that we are going to say that we want the temperature inside the house to stay exactly at 25 degrees Celsius and the outside is always going to be at 40 degrees Celsius. That's probably not realistic because day to night cycles mean that the outside temperature is going to be changing. But for this problem, that's the assumption that we're going to make. So the first thing we need to write down is the equation for steady state flow of heat. This is called Fick's first law. So Q is going to be equal to negative kappa, our thermal conductivity, multiplied by dt over dx, right? Now technically, we know that Fick's first law has to do with flux of something, and flux is an amount of something per area per time. But in this equation, Q, that's just an amount of something. That's not per area per time. So technically the correct way would be write Q per area per time, right? Sometimes that gets left off, but the units actually don't work out uh, on the left-hand side to equal the units on the right-hand side if we don't account for that. So with that said, how do we go about solving this question? Well, we're told to design a window, but we're already told the dimensions in terms of area. We know how big it is in terms of area. So what can we actually change? We're not changing the temperature on either side. The only thing that we can change is the thickness or the choice of material. And in this case, we're given a choice of material. So the only thing we can change is the thickness, so dx. That's the only thing we're going to change here. So let's go ahead and start putting in values for things that we know. First off, you'll notice that for this equation, for this uh, type of equation to work, we have to get our units correct. Um, for example, the total heat that we're allowed to enter the room is in calories. But if you look at our thermal conductivity, that's given in watts per meters Kelvin, right? Watts is joules per second. So we should probably go ahead and convert from calories to seconds or from, uh, sorry, from calories to joules or from joules to calories. Let's go calories to joules. We know that one calorie equals 4.1868 joules. Therefore, total Q that's going to be equal to 5 times 10 to the 6th multiplied by 4.1868 joules. That will cause the calories to cancel out, and we'll be left with just joules. I get this value to be 2.09 times 10 to the 7th joules. So 2.09 times 10 to the 7th joules. Okay, So that's the total amount of heat that's allowed to enter per day. Now, similarly, on the, on the area side of the window, we have four feet by four feet. But on, again, the right-hand side, our thermal conductivity has units of watts per meter Kelvin, meter. So let's go ahead and make sure that we convert our feet to meter right now. So one foot is equal to 0 0.308048 meters, right? Um, and then the other one is time one day We should put that into seconds because a watt is a joule per second Right, so we need to turn our time unit from day into second. So we know that there's going to be 24 hours in a day Let's do our conversion There are there's one hour and 60 minutes There are 60 seconds in one minute and so this allows us to cancel out everything except for seconds. And in one day, let me scroll this up a little bit. In one day, I find that there is actually 86,400 seconds. 86,400 seconds. Okay, so now that we've done those conversions, we are ready to get started. So let's write out Q over here. Q on our left-hand side is 2.09 times 10 to the seventh joules. That's going to be divided by 4. Turning that into meters is going to be multiplying it by 0 0.3048 meters. 
that whole thing is going to be squared. That will give us meters squared. And then we have time, 86, 400 seconds. So that's the left-hand side of the equation. What will the right-hand side of the equation be equal to? Let's move this up. Well, it's negative kappa, so that's going to be negative 0 0.96 watts per meter kelvin. And we know that a watt is just a joule per second, so let's actually rewrite it. That's a joule per second. We need to multiply this by the difference in temperature. We know that the outside is 40 degrees. That's going to be minus 25 degrees on the inside. And this is going to be over some distance x, negative x. That's the way that we've written this equation. Since we're saying that heat is flowing down the temperature gradient, that's why we have the negative sign in front of the thermal conductivity here. And that's why you end up with a negative x here for the thickness. So when we go ahead and simplify things, the left-hand side of our equation simplifies down to 163 joules per meter squared per second. And on the right-hand side of the equation, it simplifies down to negative 14.4 um, watts per meter, which we already decided was a joule per second per meter joule per second per meter and that is going to be then divided by negative x so we can solve for x just by bringing it over so let's take away the negative sign on both sides and we are left with just x equals 14.4 joules per second per meter divided by 163 joules per meter squared per second so joules cancel, seconds cancel, one of the meters cancels, and we're left with just our final answer of, give ourselves a little more space, um, x is equal to 0 0.0883 um, meters. Or if we convert that to centimeters, since it's easier to think about a window in centimeters, that is 8.83 centimeters. So that is a really thick window. Um, in this problem, given the glass that we were asked to use, we actually had to generate a thickness, which is really quite thick. So if you wanted to make your home uh, that same efficiency, but with a thinner window, you'd have to move to a material which has a lower thermal conductivity. And that's why they use things like double-paned glass. Double-paned glass has that same silica glass or something very near to it on the outside, but it's got an air gap in the middle, which is thin, and it's a very poor conductor of heat. Sometimes they even fill that. Instead of with air, they'll fill it with um, an inert gas like krypton or argon or a vacuum, um, different ways, and that's a, that would now become a double-paned window. And you can do triple-paned and make it even better. Or you could even move away from silica to something like uh, polymers. Many polymers that are transparent have much lower thermal conductivity. But those are the things that you would have to do if you wanted to have the same uh, low flux of heat with the same dimensions of your window but making it thinner.